been snowing all night. I don't think she's going to start, but I'm going to try. This morning I had to have her jumped. Hey, she started. Wow, am I happy about that. <coughs> Yesterday, though, it was like 20 degrees colder. Let's see what it, what it is. It's 21 degrees. So yesterday, the tow truck guy told me it was 8. That's why. He said he was so busy yesterday just, just going out and getting trucks started that wouldn't start. So... <coughs> Woohoo! Now I'm gonna go back in the hotel and get me some breakfast. I knew that if I could just get it packed up and make it to the other side of Nashville, where the snow line was, I would make it the rest of the way to Atlanta. Well, I was out here this morning, and it's been snowing ever since. I don't know whether I should head out to the mill or not. My better instincts say no, but my financial instincts say I should at least try it. Wow, this is deep. Well, she started up again. I I really thought she would, but I was still worried. I will say that since I've been trucking, this is the uh, most snow that I've trucked in. Uh, nothing like Canada, but uh, for us down here in the States, especially for us California boys, it's uh, a lot of snow. Actually driving on the freshly fallen snow, especially when it's that deep, was fairly easy because my tires would dig in and create traction. As long as I would take it slow, I felt safe. It was like driving in a postcard. I managed to make it to Mont Eagle and felt safe there for the night. This guy's trying to salt the whole parking lot. Yeah, He's trying to salt the whole parking lot with that little spreader. Holy smokes, a CRST just jackknifed at the fuel island. Yes, a CRST. Hospital in Boston, they should be driving on this ship, certainly. 
Adventures in Trucking with Indiana Jack. The next day I managed to make it from Tennessee down to Atlanta and then on to Louisiana. It was nice to be on dry ground again. Boy, what a difference today from what it was yesterday. I'm here in Louisiana. It's about 50 degrees. Sure is nice to be out of the uh, Arctic. I'm enjoying it anyway. When it's extreme like it was yesterday, all that snow and ice, and then you compare it to today's like this, it makes you appreciate days like this so much more. Well, let's get out of this little rest area. I don't usually stop in rest areas, but I'm starting to. Plus, I can get a little more exercise here. This just looked like a nice place to stop, so. Soon summer's going to be here. <coughs> oh, bless me. And then we'll be wanting uh, some cooler weather. I have three more hours to drive today, so I'm going to make it to Longview, Texas. Some of you know what's in Longview, Texas. You'll just have to wait and see. I'm Indiana Jack. Let's get rolling. You know, I have fond memories of uh, as a kid. When I was a kid, we always moved all over the whole country. And for some reason, I was always home when the movers got there. My parents, they worked, of course. And my first memories of truck drivers was that they would always bring me lunch or whatever they were eating, they would offer me something. So the driver would send one of the packers down to one of the local places and bring me back some lunch along with everybody else. So now I'm kind of getting to uh, return that favor. I'm over at a shipper or at a receiver, and they said if I brought them three white chocolate mochas, they'd unload me early. Otherwise, I'd have to wait all day. So let's see if they are like the truck drivers that I remember as a kid. I'm going into Starbucks and get three white chocolate mochas for them. The thing is, my carrier told me this was an appointment for 7 o'clock this morning. So I show up and it's a, an appointment for 7 o'clock tonight. So that's why I'm desperate. Alright, mission accomplished. 
I feel like a waiter or a server. I fulfilled my part of the deal now. Let's see if they do theirs. Even if it gets me out of here an hour or two earlier, that would be great. I'm kind of desperate. I want to get out of here. It's cold. Who wants to wait at a company for eight hours and get unloaded? Not me. Because I'm definitely off duty. Well, I'm on Starbucks duty. This is the line to Starbucks. <laughs> oh boy. No kidding. I just got back, gave them their drinks, their lies, eyes lit up, and they gave me a door. Tell me food doesn't make people respond or drinks. Now it's true, I'm just getting a door. But still. I'm just happy to be acknowledged. took them about an hour to get me unloaded. I need to do in California so if everything goes smoothly I should be back to California by the end of the week and what what could have taken 12 hours there at that place, thanks to Starbucks, it only took three hours. You know, I've heard of guys who frequent a certain shipper or receiver and they're known there get put to the front of the line because they're friends with the shipper or the receiver. And that's, everybody complains about that, but that's true, And but it's kind of a natural thing. If you know somebody and you're their friend, you want to treat them better 
than somebody you don't know. And what, what just happened with me is a perfect example of that. Those guys don't know me, but because I brought them a little doggy treat, they helped me out. I guess that's how the Mexican uh, runs their government, isn't that true? If you go there and you get a ticket, you have to bribe the officer right there on the side of the road. I've never had that happen to me, but I've had friends that have had that happen, and I've heard about it. So, carry some little treats with you, <laughs> or little gift cards or something. Surely you can't know every shipper and receiver. I certainly don't. In fact, most of these places I go, I don't know the shippers and receivers. And we're just going to run over here to the yard and pick up this trailer and get on our way to Kansas City, where everything's up to date. got here yet that I'm waiting for. So I'm going to go over to Walmart, buy some things that I need for the truck like oatmeal, raisins, that kind of stuff. Just a real quick message here. I'm never going to stop talking about DAT. That's DAT Solutions, my favorite software. If you're a truck driver, an owner operator, if you're a business owner, a broker, put your loads on DAT. Everyone looks at DAT. Everyone that is in the trucking industry, it's the oldest software that everyone's been using for years and years hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of loads on there 30 days free if you click the link below I just had a guy he wanted to sell me a wireless theater right out of his car he, uh, he said the warehouse just happened to have a few extra and he was gonna give it to me at a good price I've never heard anybody say that. I did have a friend of mine named Brent. And he goes to New York City a lot. And back when VCRs were new, he uh, bought a VCR from a guy in uh, Times Square. He gets it back to the hotel room all excited and it's filled with newspapers, the box. So don't buy things in a parking lot at Walmart and don't buy things on Times Square. So I never, after my friend told me that, I never, I made sure I never did that. Let's get out of Walmart. I have this parking lot. I never feel safe at this one. It's, I don't know, kind of shady. So let's get out of here. I've been waiting here for 24 hours, almost, and the guy just finally pulled in. He's 24 hours late. He was supposed to be here yesterday. Now I'm going to be late. It doesn't seem like anybody cares. I won't be late because the trailer has to be there today, but he was supposed to be here yesterday. That's why I was in a hurry and bought those guys Starbucks because I wanted to get moving. 
but not everybody has the same part in them that wants to keep things moving. Some guys are just like an old, on an old donkey. They're on their own timetable. All right, we're getting out of here. There's no place to pull over to, to do my paperwork though. They, they don't give you, your, at this place, they don't give you your paperwork until you're leaving and there's no place to pull over to do it. So, I'm just not gonna do a loaded call, I guess. Until I stop again. Turn right on I-45 North and then turn right on 750 feet. Thank goodness we have another light load. This feels more like a real 20,000 pound. Turn right on South I-45. Whereas that one yesterday felt a to lot heavier than this. with that guy being late and making me late is now I have to go through the Dallas traffic in rush hour so this is how thrilled I am at that hopefully I'll uh, get lucky some fuel here in uh, Tonkawa, Oklahoma. And no need to send me the right pronunciation of that name. <laughs> I know it's Indian, but I don't know if I said it right. Tonkawa. It looks like to me, Tonkawa. Maybe it's Tonkawa. But I'm sure you'll send me the correct pronunciation. I am so happy I have not hit any ice or snow and it's 50 degrees. And 35's been great. despise this loves because it's so small but it's got cheap fuel so and it's a Friday so I'm only getting like 25 gallons I'd rather have a hundred dollars taken off of my paycheck today rather than 400 so that's why there by six o'clock tonight into uh, Topeka. But for now we're gonna get fuel. Ah! All right, so I put 25 gallons in. That ought to at least get me to uh, Kansas City and then tomorrow I'll do a full fill up and uh, from there we go to Fontana, California. I'm sure I'm just gonna get a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. 
didn't come out right away. So I pushed the button and still nothing came out. And then eventually it came out. It's just not as fast. Not as fast as New Jersey. Man, they want to get your money fast. Chicago, too. 53 degrees here in Kansas on the Kansas City Turnpike. We're in Wichita, Kansas, right near there. And from this point, we head um, a little more westerly on 54 up to New Mexico. I forgot my coffee cup. That's like a truck forgetting its fuel tanks. Well, we got our coffee filled up. The thing is, on 54, through Kansas, there's not a lot of places to stop. So you kind of have to get some things to take with you. Uh, because after from Wichita to Tucumcari, there's some little places like uh, Liberal, Kansas, and stuff like that, but not a lot. We're at the west end of Wichita. And the only truck stop that used to be here is shut down. You can still park your truck there, but there's no trucking services there at that shell. I mean, there's food because you can walk over to McDonald's and stuff, but it's one of the only places that you used to be able to stop, and now you can't stop there. So come on, Wichita, you got to get a truck stop open. Because from here to uh, no liberal it's about 200 miles and there's really nothing in between so make sure you have stuff on board if you're taking 54 through Kansas there's no better place to stretch your legs than out on your front doorstep that's what I do and yes, I get out and walk around, but the initial uh, get out of your truck is the one of uh, getting up in the morning. You know, they've really done 54 the right way here through Kansas. It's four lane freeway now all the way to here. I'm in Pratt, Kansas right now. Uh, it used to be just two lane so I'm happy about that it'll probably still be two lane in Oklahoma and Texas and New Mexico but we'll see so will you there's nothing like gas station chicken strips for lunch and some ranch dressing Those were good little uh, chicken things. That'll hold me over till tonight. Maybe I'll get some peanuts or something for a uh, midday snack.
Kelso Junction. Not El Paso, just Paso. Pretty good. Good enough for me. This trip's only 1,500 miles, so I think I'll go six, six, and three. Yeah, six, six, and three. Unless we have weather tomorrow. I've been following this truck ever since uh, Loves in Hooker, Oklahoma. New Mexico. Oh boy, I'm tired. I'm not gonna look at the weather tonight. It's just something I, uh, if I look at the weather at night and it's gonna be bad in the morning, then I don't sleep as well because I am thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get up and have to shovel out of 10 feet of snow. But if I don't look at the weather at night, then I look at it in the morning, then it's just that it works out better for me. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever, whatsoever whether I look at the weather tonight or in the morning. So I think I'm gonna go get me some food for dinner and then watch a movie. The reason I said that about the weather is look at it over there towards Denver. There's supposed to be a massive storm in Denver tonight. We're far enough away that it shouldn't reach down here, but that's why I was thinking about it in the first place.
The next morning between Tucumcari and Albuquerque, there was quite a bit of icing, but the roads were well salted, keeping the trucks moving. Now you see those trucks there up on the highway. You think they're just sitting there, right? Well, they are. There's a reason they're just sitting there. They're all waiting to get into lunch here at the TA in Ontario, California. There's just too many trucks for this area. We need a couple more truck stops here that would uh, service all the trucks and get them in and out quicker. But I know the neighbors certainly can't be happy at all this traffic. It's better. Uh it's better since they built that train over crossing, but for now, we'll just have to wait our turn to get in there for lunch. Houston, we have a problem. I arrived at a shipper this morning and the landing gear wouldn't move on one side of the trailer. So I'm at a trailer repair place right now. Looks like one of the gears broke off inside or something like that so they're repairing it what they did was just cut off okay they just cut off the old leg and now they're uh, welding a new leg I'm calling them legs <laughs> uh, they're gonna they'll weld the new leg right on there Don't watch that, guys. You're going to burn your eyes out. All right, well, I got my trailer. It's all fixed. We're ready to go. Now we're headed to Las Vegas, all the way from snowy Owensboro. Thanks for watching me. I'm Indiana Jack. Hey, make sure that you hit subscribe, like, and share. We'll see you next time.